want to welcome everybody and good afternoon everybody who's joining us uh, from Europe and the UK. Um, I would appreciate if somebody could just click the Q&A panel on their screen to make sure that the broadcast is actually available and you can hear us. So uh, Yes, yes, they can. You can? Okay. Oh, I got a yes. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Eric. All right. So let me just go full screen. Let's start this off. Um, my name is David Gugick. I'm the VP of Product Management over at MSP360, and I'm happy to be joined today with uh, Richard Zeck. He's the director of EMEA Sales over at Wasabi, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Wasabi as a blob storage cloud, public cloud storage option for your backup data, as well as uh, MSP360 uh, manage backup as a way for you in the managed services market to uh, you know back up your customer data, protect your customer data in case of uh, problems like you know accidental data loss or ransomware infections or just you know disaster like you know destruction of hard drives or floods or earthquakes or whatever other issues that you may deal with day-to-day. Uh, -day. Uh, as far as the agenda goes, we'll do a, just a quick introduction of each company. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about solving MSP problems, some of the issues that MSPs that we speak with are dealing with, um, how to address those, those concerns that you may have, and how that applies to the MSP 360 Managed Backup Portfolio. Then uh, I'll turn it over to Richard. We'll talk a, a lot about Wasabi and what it gives you as a, you know, an MSP owner or manager. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit uh, about a case study we have. Unfortunately, we had a scheduling issue and uh, John over at Abbey Comp IT Solutions couldn't be here, but I'll go ahead and present on his behalf some of the uh, information about his uh, managed services company and now he's leveraging these products. Then we'll do wrap up and QA. So everybody should have a Q&A panel that they can access from the Zoom interface. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in. We'll get to them at the end. If we cannot get to one of your questions, we will reach out to you afterwards. And as always, if anybody needs to leave early or wants to uh, make sure that somebody else that they work with, a colleague, wants to see this presentation, we will make the presentation available to everyone. We'll just send out links where you can rewatch it as needed, but we do appreciate you taking the time out of your afternoon to uh, join us live today. So I'll turn it over to Richard very quickly just to introduce Wasabi. We'll come back to me and then I'll continue the presentation. Thank you, thank you very much, David. Uh, so Wasabi is a hot storage, storage solution. So our mission is really to provide a low price, high performance and secure object storage solutions. So it's a company that has been created by the two founders of Carbonite in 2015, David Friend and Jeff Flowers. Uh, you probably know that Carbonite has been acquired by OpenText uh, two weeks ago. And we have raised up to now 78 million to develop a solution that is competing again with Amazon S3. So we are mainly just providing storage. We are not providing any compute. We are providing cloud storage as a service. It's S3 compatible and uh, we have uh, deployed uh, up to now about uh, 100 petabytes of storage all over the world. We are growing extremely fast. We have uh, more than 10,000 customers all over the world, several locations, uh, both in US and Europe, and we are opening Japan uh, very soon. So that's for the introduction. Okay, great. Thank you, Richard. Uh, MSP360, well, most of you who have been our customers for a long time know us as Cloudberry. Uh, and I guess the only point of this slide is to let you know that we are the same great company. We are just going through a, a rebrand. It's There's no change in management or strategic change in, in the company itself. It's just that we tend to focus on MSPs and we decided let's have a shorter name than Cloudberry Lab uh, with MSP in the name and so we are rebranding as MSP360. It's been a slow rebrand, um, but that'll kind of be more formalized by early next year. So we've been around since 2008 and our goal from the beginning has been to provide powerful and affordable backup services to managed services, managed service providers. And one of the ways we did that and we'll talk about is uh, buying, allowing you to protect all of your customer data by using the public cloud storage of your choice. And in this case, we'll be talking a lot about Wasabi. 
So what are some of the MSP problems that uh, we run into uh, and that we hear from customers, uh, especially as it relates to backup and disaster recovery? And these are the things I've kind of been talking about for actually a couple of years now. I think uh, everybody knows a lot of this stuff. Uh, these were, these were, you know, tidbits of information that used to come out by analysts, you know, trying to scare everybody into making sure that they were able to grow effectively and manage their databases and all of their storage. But what they always told us and what turned out to really be true was that data really is uh, doubling in size every 18 to 24 months. And, you know, 10 years ago, there was a lot of data, but, you know, as you double each year, the amount of data that's out there is incredibly large. People are keeping everything whether it's personal stuff like just images that are getting bigger and bigger or videos you're taking, or just if you're in, in business, just the number of documents you're keeping, uh, PDFs and office docs and everything else. Uh, the amount of data out there with your email and your business data, if you're dealing with customers in the medical field, their imaging data, um, patient records, accounting information, whatever types of customers you're dealing with, they have a lot of data and that data keeps growing. Um, and it's not just on the servers, it's the desktops uh, as well. A lot of customers out there will use their desktops that will take them home. They'll even throw their personal stuff on there, which becomes more important that it may be protected in some way since they tend to be multi-use machines. And the important thing is that this data needs to be backed up because you need to make sure that as a managed service provider, should there be some accidental or malicious data deletion, through hardware or software issues or some type of malware that you can return that data. I mean, we always tell customers and, and, you know, MSPs tell our customers the same thing. You know, we don't back up for backup sake. We back up so we can restore. So you need to make sure that all your customer data is backed up. But unlike, you know, companies that are just backing up their own data, uh, MSPs are in a unique position way where they have to buy services and then resell those services for a profit. Uh, in order to protect their customers. And they need to make sure that their prices are competitive in the region where they operate. So, um, and also keeping local backups is not really sufficient. It does put you, the data at risk from disaster malware and that type of stuff, right? We hear about these ransomware attacks all the time that are encrypting all the information on the network. Uh, local backups would be on that network and would be at risk. Um, so MSPs over the years have been increasingly looking to the public cloud as a new target for backups. Um, and I think, you know, when I talk about data growing, I think this is another slide that we'll probably won't have to talk about very soon because I think the fears of the public cloud are by and large being overcome and people are much more comfortable with it than they were say three and four years ago. But there was always this, there were always these fears that we used to hear about that it was, you know, complicated and, um, you know, is very costly. And that's not really the case. I mean, the management is handled for you by Wasabi in this case. The uh, security is handled for you on their end um, and through the software, through end-to-end -end encryption and storage-based encryption. The cost is managed because you get economies of scale. You have a company out there like Wasabi that's buying, you know, thousands of hard drives at a time and they're operating them, you know, under a single brand and they're able to offer those solutions and that storage to you as a customer <clears throat> at a much lower cost than, you know, you would be able to do if you were operating your own data center. And if you're operating your own data center right now, and we do work with you know, MSPs that, that have you know, legacy data centers that they're still operating, there are a lot of costs involved, both, both you know, hard costs, your, your capital expenditures, your soft costs, like you know, your administration. But there's a lot of costs involved to running a data center, not to mention capacity planning. You have to know how fast your data is growing uh, so you can plan in advance, make sure you have sufficient hard drive space. That's not something you really have to deal with. Uh, with the cloud, it's always important to know how quickly your data is growing just for budgeting purposes. Uh, so you understand how your business operates and how what type of data you're backing up with your customers. But you don't have to worry about planning for that growth in advance when you use a service like Wasabi because uh, the public cloud will grow with you. It's also highly available and durable. That means there's you know, redundancy in the way the data is stored. There's uh, high availability, meaning there's redundancies in the networks and the internet connections to make sure that it's available when you need it. 
Um, and you pay for what you need, which is great. So rather than having to go out and buy a lot of hard drive space to plan for the next two to you know three years worth of growth, you just pay for the gigabytes that you use. Um, with MSP360, we offer a service called Manage Backup, and it's a backup as a service that we offer to manage service providers. It's both powerful and affordable, and it was designed from the ground up for you. Uh, we decoupled storage from the solution, cloud storage, uh, from the very beginning, and we decided we would work with all the public cloud vendors like Wasabi and let you as an MSP decide where you want to put your storage. If you want to use Wasabi, it's a great choice. You could open an account directly with them. That means we can offer you the service at a much more affordable price because we're not running a private data center where we need to, you know, pay for all the things I just talked about, you know, all those capital expenditures for hard drive bays and air conditioning, cooling and electrical costs and administrative costs and replacing hard drives and doing our capacity planning and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to do that. We leave that to Asabi to do. Um, and then you can buy directly from them at the price that they sell to everyone, which is nice. That means it's more affordable. And our monthly subscription model means that, you know, you pay for what you need. Your cash flow is a lot easier to manage because you're just paying for the licenses you use that, mo that month. And we work very closely with our partners, all of them. So while we support public clouds, it's not like we just provide these, you know, yeah. blind connectors and hope for the best. We are partners with all of these public cloud storage vendors, including Wasabi. We work very closely with them to make sure the product runs at top speed, but also uh, providing support for things like synthetic full backups. What we can do on the MSP360 side is we protect everything. So we can protect your Windows, your Linux and Mac, doesn't matter if they're endpoints or servers, they're, we don't actually differentiate on the licensing price between them. Uh, we can do file and image-based backups. So if you have, you're backing up endpoints and you don't care about, you say the Windows 10 operating systems or even older Windows 7 operating systems, you can just back up the important files and folders on them. But if you're backing up servers or even any desktops that are important, where you need to make sure that you can restore the entire image if needed, you can do full image-based backups. We just pour bare metal restore so we can restore it to the same or a different type of hardware, which is great. Um, we can restore to virtual. We can restore to uh, the cloud if needed, which is great. We also have application support for Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft Exchange, if you have customers that are running those on-prem uh, applications, as well as host level backup support for Hyper-V and VMware. And also we can we back up Office 365 and Google G Suite at the mailbox level. So you backed up everything, but we can also recover everything really anywhere. So you can restore files, of course, from your file backup, but you can also restore files from other types of backups like image and virtual machines. So if you're doing an image-based backup, there's no reason to restore an entire volume just to get a few files back. You can pull out the files you need from those types of backups as well. And as I mentioned, we can restore you know, to physical or virtual those images as well as restore it to the cloud. Our features are MSP focused. Uh, we talked about that. We designed the product from the ground up for managed service providers. So we allow you to set up, if you're not using us right now, if you're thinking about becoming a customer, the interface is set up for you to create all of your administrators and sub administrators for management purposes. Then you can define all of your customers and set them up. You can assign them templates. So you know when a new customer endpoint or server comes online, uh, certain settings or uh, you know, backups are applied to them automatically. Um, it's very easy to manage. Uh, you can push out the agent initially, one of a few different ways, either silently with a silent MSI in the case of Windows or command line in the case of Linux or Mac. Uh, interactively, if you happen to be on site and it's a small customer, you can just install those agents uh, very quickly. You can push them out through say a, uh, an RMM type tool if you have those uh, using scripts that we provide. Uh, once the agents are out there, they can be automatically managed and upgraded from our thin client interface, which you know we host in the cloud. So it's all managed from a thin client. Uh, there's no reason that you need to connect to the endpoints and servers that you're managing themselves uh, to do the backup and restore management. Everything can be handled from the thin client, which is nice. 
We also do integrate with popular RMM and PSA solutions uh, like you know, ConnectWise and Autotask. Um, another nice thing is that you can do full rebranding. So if, you know, in the case of Abicomp, which is the company we're gonna be talking about today, uh, they wanna sell backup services to their customers. They wanna advertise their brand, it's important. Branding is really important when you're in the managed services community. You're selling your company, you're selling your reputation. Why sell you know, MSP 360 managed backup and have that show up on all of your customers' endpoints and servers? Rebrand it under your own company name, under you know, Abicomp IT Solutions. Um, and then your customers can see your brand as backup. That way you're not advertising a third party product. In fact, your customers don't even have to know what product you're using. Uh, it's just a solution you're providing to protect them. Um, we also have full APIs for integration if you need to integrate uh, with the product uh, from your own portal or things like that or to do any kind of management you need. So these technical features that we have in the, pro in the product solve real issues that really have been conveyed to us by MSPs over the years. We do the file and image backup that we talked about. We support synthetic full backups with Wasabi, which is important. Uh, full backups, meaning we're backing up entire volumes on a server, which can be you know hundreds of gigabytes in size. Um, we do incrementals on them every day after the initial full backup, but uh, at, some, at some period, whether it's every two weeks, every month, let's say you may wanna do another full backup. So rather than having to back up that entire volume in full again every month, the synthetic full backup support with Wasabi allows us to recreate a new full inside Wasabi from the previous uh, full and incremental backups that already exist there along with the new information. So we can effectively create a new full within Wasabi without having to perform an entire full backup, which can save not only a lot of backup time, but reduce your ba upstream bandwidth going to the cloud and effectively just speed everything up, which is quite nice. We do support hybrid backups. So, you know, we talked about local backups only if you're using them by themselves being a risk to the data, that's true, but there, it's nice to have local backups. Uh, restores can be much faster if you're restoring from within, say, a gigabit ethernet or 10 gigabit ethernet network uh, on fast drives. So we do support hybrid backups that allow you to back up both locally and to the cloud in a single pass, which is quite nice. We do data compression, which can reduce the data. We perform end-to-end -end encryption, so the data is encrypted at the source. Uh, it's encrypted over the wire using, you know, TLS, SSL type encryption, and it's stored fully encrypted on the Wasabi side. Um, uh, the nice thing about that is that if you're doing things like backing up large files, uh, say like Outlook PST files, files that are, you know, you know multi gigabytes in size, but maybe change very little day to day, we also support what we call block level backups. Uh, that allow us to back up the changes within individual files to reduce the amount of time that it takes to do those backups day to day. You can set your own retention with your customers based on their needs. So if you have uh, you know, financial customers that need to keep certain backups for seven years, you can set that. That's sort of like a standard in the United States. It may be different in the EU. If you have customers with medical data or financial data or different requirements for retention, you can decide how many file versions you keep how many you know, uh, weeks, months, or years worth of data uh, that your backups are kept for uh, until they can safely be deleted. And then we will automatically remove those backups based on your retention settings. And if you have issues with a bandwidth, you're dealing with a customer that has maybe good downstream bandwidth, but somewhat slow upstream bandwidth, or you're worried that the backups you're running during the day would, might interfere with their normal internet usage, you can control bandwidth with scheduling. You could limit bandwidth, as an example, uh, during business hours and give full bandwidth to the backup, uh, to manage backup uh, at night after business hours are over. So there's a lot of controls there for you as the managed service provider. So advanced features, affordable pricing. What does it cost you as a managed service provider to get into MSP 360 managed backup? The pricing starts at only $6 a month. That is for file or image-based backup. You can do either with the license. 
as I mentioned earlier, it's the same for desktops as it is for servers. We do not charge our customers based on whether or not they're backing up a server and double or triple the price just because it's a server. It's the same exact price. And the other thing you should be aware of, there are quantity discounts. That's the list price and it only comes down. The more you buy, the lower the cost you'll pay. So because we've decoupled storage from the solution, we let you open up accounts directly with Wasabi. We're not only able to sell you these services at a very low cost to begin with, but we can even bring down those costs with volume. And at volume, you might be paying you know, well under $4 uh, per endpoint or server to back them up. Now we do have additional licenses if you need added features for other applications like SQL Server Exchange. Uh, you can license uh, Hyper-V or VMware at the host level with our two CPU socket licenses that would cover all VMs on a particular host. And then you can also uh, license uh, Office 365 and Google G Suite if you're using those hosted applications with your customers and want to protect, you know, the, uh, you know, the email, the, you know, say things like Google Drive, calendar, contacts, that kind of stuff that that's available at a lower cost. I believe those start at U.S. pricing about $2.40 per user. Now, we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier, you work directly with, with Sabi, so you're gonna be opening up two accounts if you wanna get going with a combined MSP360 with Sabi solution. But what this means is because you're paying the lowest possible cost from us and the lowest possible cost for Wasabi, and I'm gonna turn this over to Richard in a second to tell you all about uh, what Wasabi has going on with them. Uh, we're, where I sell you at a low price, you are able to package that up tier your backup services for customers of any size and need and sell services to your customers that make profit for you while keeping your pricing very competitive and potentially a lot less costly than some of your competitors who might be offering other third-party backup services. So let me turn this over to Richard. He's going to walk you through the Wasabi stuff. Uh, Richard, if you need me to move a slide, if I'm, a li if I'm not being reactive enough, just tell me next slide and I'll go ahead and move you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much, David. So when you start with Wasabi, as we explained at the beginning, Wasabi is a cloud storage solution. So uh, essentially we are providing uh, public cloud access to a large uh, capacity with high level of resiliency. But when you start, you have, let's say, to go through different questions where I, I should put my backup. Should I put it locally? Should I put it in the cloud? Uh, should I adopt an hybrid cloud architecture? And uh, of course, the, the reason of moving to the cloud is usually because you are looking at uh, a better pricing for your storage to keep your long-term retention with your storage, and especially for backups as well as a, a lack of resources to manage your storage locally. So the thing is that when you are challenging, the, the big challenge in managing backups is to say, well, I want to reduce the cost. I'm having a, a, a dozen or hundred of customers to manage in parallel. So how I can manage all these customers and provide them the highest level of data resiliency possible through their backups. And maybe next slide. David? So the thing is that, of course, when you are going to the cost point, uh, all the solutions that are available in the cloud today are not necessarily equal. So you, you have different solutions from different vendors, from Amazon, or I'm not, not supposed to, to talk about that, but you have Amazon, you have Microsoft, uh, both are providing different level of tiering in the cloud just to reduce the cost. But there are some, some drawback on this. First of all, when you are using archive solutions that are usually used for to keep the backups for a long term uh, and for uh, uh, retention time or certain retention time, then you are facing an issue of getting back the data. So from the deep archive, from the glacier solutions, from the archive solutions from Microsoft, each time you need to get back the data, you will have to pay for the download. And this is creating, uh, let's say, some issues related to the cost when you do recovery. So the question of making a backup is not only oh, where, where I put and how I do my backups, it's also a matter of making the recovery and how much performance I'm expecting through the recovery process and how much it will cost us 
to recover my data. So the, the great thing with Wasabi is that we have absolutely no tier. Uh, we are not using archive, we are not using uh, tapes as a technology, for example, archive or Glacier are uh, using tape-based technologies. We are only providing one tier and we are just using disk for the object storage. So it's really one tier, hot performance for a cold price, which is $5.99 per terabyte per month. So if you compare that, and especially if you want to predict your price, your cost, when you are using or combining MSP360 and Wasabi, the next thing that you will go through is the, 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 the price per capacity. So if you take what's, let's say, a typical uh, invoice, you will see that the price difference between well-known uh, uh, object storage providers and Wasabi is pretty significant. So for 10 terabyte, we are about, and these are real examples, of course, of real monthly bills. For 10 terabyte, you should pay around $250 for a standard cloud uh, well-known solution uh, for uh, $59 with Wasabi. So we are only having a flat fee approach, $5.99 per terabyte. It's really disruptive. Uh, compared to what the competitors are providing. But the key thing is that we are not charging for egress. So each time you are downloading for Wasabi, uh, you will not be charged for the downloads. I'm used to say that, well, if you have to pay to get back your data, it's, it's at some point uh, the same definition as uh, being under a ransomware uh, context because it's, it's a real problem to have to pay, especially when you are storing or archiving long-term data, it's, it's a problem to pay to get it back. We are not charging for API calls. We are using S3 as an interface. We are, so MSP360 is connected to Wasabi using the S3 interface. And each time a call is sent to Wasabi by MSP360, we are not charging for it. It's not the case for both Amazon and Microsoft. So we are not charging the API calls and this could change dramatically the, the, the prices and the monthly cost if you are doing a lot of requests to the object storage side. So what we are providing is really an object storage architecture that is using a ratio coding algorithm. So we can exascale, we can really scale to exabyte of storage. We are still providing the 11.9 data durability. 11.9 data durability, it's a, it's a standard technical terminology used in Azure coding world or object storage world. This is really uh, not a company statement. It is the result of a calculation. And we are making a difference between data durability and system availability. A system availability is uh, how much your system or how long time your system will be available from your location to the data center level. Usually it's related to the network itself. And we are providing uh, cross region replication or cross data re center replication by native bucket replication from one data center to another one. So we are providing multiple data centers, as I said, for Europe and European customers. We have a location in Amsterdam. So we are hosted in Equinix EM4 data centers. Uh, and it's essential for the GDPR compliance solutions. All the data is encrypted from the source to the data center during transit, as well as on the system itself. So we are checking the integrity and this is really something that is uh, important, especially because we are providing a unique feature at Wasabi, which is called immutable buckets. Immutable buckets are looking like a worm system in the cloud. So if you want to make sure that nothing can happen to your data when, once you are moving your data to Wasabi, the immutable bucket is the solution. This means that even if you have, let's say, a, a ransomware that has infected your system or your data and you are moving this data to the cloud, nothing can happen to the, to the data if it's stored in an immutable bucket. So the ransomware itself cannot change the content. And even if you are losing your credentials or someone has stolen your credentials, 
admin credentials, encryption keys, this guy cannot change the content or cannot delete the content of an immutable bucket. So this is kind of level of protection that is pretty hard to have locally. And uh, Wasabi is providing this feature uh, as part of the standard offering. So within the $5.99 per terabyte per month, you can create as many immutable buckets as you want. And you can use this capability to store your uh, legal documents or critical uh, documents. So we have, of course, we are of course certified uh, through our data center providers. For Europe, we are providing also the GDPR compliance uh, documents. So Equinix in, in Amsterdam is a tier three plus data center. A tier three plus, plus data center means that we are providing a, a physical protection to the system that is uh, protected by uh, Wasabi. So in other words, it's a way to move your data out of your premises to a data center that is an enterprise class data center used by the large banks, for example, in Europe. So we are operating from the same uh, rooms, from, from the same locations than the, one of the largest banks in Europe. And this is providing also an additional guarantee to your data that it is, this data is protected physically from intrusion. So in terms of performance, and we are usually asked why and how we can build a such system that is faster than the competition. So one of the key statements for Wasabi is to say that we are faster than most of our competitors. So we are not only cheaper, but we are also faster. And uh, this, the, the reason why we are providing or performing faster is that we are aggregating multiple technologies. Uh, one of the technology is called SMR for the single magnetic recording technology that comes directly from the disk vendors. And the SMR technology is uh, able to increase the density and the performance of each individual hard disk that we are using on our system. So we have built our own software layers from the top level to the hardware level. So we are really managing how the disks are behaving with the SMR technologies and we are able to put more than 70% or 80% of the capacity on the disk while the standard file system, for example, when you are using a Linux is, is probably reaching 60% uh, with a lot of difficulties. So this means that we are able to increase the density and we have designed an architecture that is highly scalable. So we have built an architecture that is dedicated to object storage systems. And we cannot, of course, run any compute uh, as opposed to what Amazon or Microsoft are doing on their object storage systems. We are providing any compute capabilities. So we have designed our system to run and manage as fast as possible an object storage architecture. So we have made some benchmark that you can download from our website. You will see that uh, the, price, the, the performance comparison between what Wasabi is able to perform and what Amazon is able to perform from an Amazon location with EC2 compute connected to Wasabi and, and, and connected to Amazon. So on the next slide. So the reason that we are partnering. First of all, MSP360 is one of our first partner, Technology Alliance partner, since the beginning, since 2017. So we have hundreds of customers using Wasabi and, and MST for MSP360 in the world. So all the reason they are using the boat is that, first of all, it's easy. It's extremely fast. Uh, it's the connection between Wasabi and, and MSP360 is bringing two main values to your customers. It brings the protection part from the software side, and it brings also the data protection resiliency on the Wasabi side. So by combining the two, you are really providing an enterprise class uh, level of protection for any kind of level uh, of customer infrastructure. So you are saving costs, 
you have a real disaster recovery strategy that is relying also on the fact that you are moving your data in a tier three plus data center on Wasabi. That's also part of the cloud value. And you can also provide something that is, uh, let's say, much better in terms of performance. So the fact that Wasabi is performing faster, this means that you can also reduce your backup windows. So the, one of the issue that was related to the cloud adoption or one of the point of resistance was to say, hey, well, my cloud is very slow. I cannot do the backup to the cloud because it's too slow. That's not the case with Wasabi and MP360. The thing is that because we are performing faster, you can reduce your backup window and increase the, the, the RTO and re recovery point objective so that you are really performing over the cloud as if your storage would be an on-premise storage or more or less. All right, is, uh, I think that covers it, Richard. Thank you so much. I think um, <clears throat> one of the things that I just reiterate from the MSP 360 side is that our, you know, most of our customers um, come from uh, North America and Europe. And one of the complaints we've complaints and requests we've had over the years is, uh, you know, we have customers in Europe that wanted for a long time to be able to use a service like Wasabi because they heard great things about it uh, in the U.S. But because of, you know, compliance issues, it just, and really distance, it really wasn't feasible to send data from EU locations, uh, you know, across the Atlantic to one of the Wasabi data centers. So now that Wasabi is firmly planted in Europe. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are very excited and actually actively switching from other solutions in order to take advantage of the features and the cost savings that they can get uh, with Wasabi in the new EU location. Uh, one of those, and I was, I really wanted John Scrivener, who's the managing director at Abbey Comp, to. Uh, be here, as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately can. So I'll just go through the slide quickly, uh, just based on some talking points that uh, you know we had prior to the call. Uh, so uh, John's company is uh, based in London and he, he's been around since 2002. And he's, uh, he provides IT services primarily for uh, companies uh, that do creative. So as we know, uh, companies that do creative tend to be working with big files um, and those files need to be protected for long term and it's usually not feasible to keep them all, you know, on prem on local disks. So a lot of these uh, companies want their data saved somewhere. Uh, John was using a competitive cloud solution and a different backup product um, initially that provided uh, private cloud storage that was very expensive and because it was expensive for him to buy it was even more expensive for him to package up for his customers and uh, that put him in a position where some of his customers didn't want to buy backup services and others were you know forced to do a more uh, diligent search to see if there's any other managed service providers out there that can back up at a more reasonable price um, he has about 80 clients right now, but uh, collectively they have uh, over 400 terabytes of data. That is quite a lot of data. Uh, and that's data that not only needs to get backed up and retained, but it's also data that needs to be accessed frequently as clients need to access old files. Um, and that was one of the things that brought John and Abby Comp to MSP 360. One was our low cost for him to back up what he wanted. Uh, the second thing was that he could select the cloud storage that he wanted and he wanted to use Wasabi's uh, Amsterdam region for that. Uh, what he liked about Wasabi was that there were no data egress charges so he could restore that data. Uh, that there were no API charges so it didn't matter what kind of access he had to that data. That he was uh, gonna be billed a fixed, you know, whatever, $5.99 US price per terabyte of data. And that was very easy for him to package up and monetize with his customers uh, while still ma maintaining, make, uh, making quite a bit of profit without overcharging them. And that was really 
what he needed. So um, the slides here, if anybody wants to review it, you know, offline when we send out the presentation, you can uh, certainly do that. But it was a, uh, you know, it was a good way for him and his company to manage his margins and costs while still making profit. And, and you know, MSPs are in, in, in the market to manage customer IT services. And what you need to be able to do in order to do that is hire people and make some money, right? I, I don't, you know, uh, uh, MSPs are not shy. We, you know, they wanna make some, generate revenue. They wanna, you know, make a living. Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of, right? Everybody wants to do it, uh, but it's really hard to do when you're buying services that are overpriced to begin with. So uh, if you can get uh, into services that provide the features that you need, but at a more affordable price, then you're in a position of being able to bundle them up, add them into your base set of services, sell them as separate services if you need it, all at a price that's uh, you know, with an acceptable uh, limits for your customers and keeps you competitive with the you know, myriad of IT service providers that you're competing against every day. Um, so we'll hit the Q and A panel and see if there are any questions. Um, um, but we wanted to provide just some wrap up and links for you. Two important links on this page are the sign up free trial for uh, still says Cloudberry there, but uh, Cloudberry MBS or MSP 360 Manage Backup. You don't need a credit card. It takes about thirty seconds to sign up. All we need is an email address. The sign up with Wasabi is equally as fast. There's a link down here for the sign up page. Both can be done in just a matter of minutes and you can get started using the combined software. If anybody on the call signs up for MBS, our managed backup, uh, and needs a more formal demo for you and you know, your IT and your technicians are gonna be managing this, we can certainly do that. Just uh, when somebody reaches out to you, just let the account manager know that you'd like to set up a demo with one of our solution architects and we'd be more than happy to walk you through the product uh, at a time of your convenience and show you how you can use Manage Backup with Wasabi. Uh, we'll help you with uh, everything you need to get started testing and using it. And then when you decide to sign up and we think you'll like what we have to offer and we think you'll really love the combined solution between MSP360 uh, and Wasabi, uh, you can start offering these services at a very affordable price while generating a lot of revenue for your company and making profit. So a couple other important links on there, MSP360 website, uh, solutions for our solutions for Wasabi, uh, as well as uh, Wasabi links, and as well as uh, uh, our branded page on the Wasabi website if you want to read more. And if you feel like heading over to Abbey Comp IT Solutions just to see what they offer, you can just see more about the, uh, uh, the case study. So uh, let me just pull open the Q&A, see if I can do that, um, see what kind of questions there are. Um, so uh, we have one question uh, just about retention and how we handle it. Um, we currently on the manage backup side handle things version and time based. That means you can say, I want to keep, you know, 10 versions of every file for, you know, um, 90 days, up to 90 days, anything older than that, it's okay to get rid of. Uh, but we are working on uh, some more advanced retention uh, traditionally called GFS retention, that's grandfather, father, son, that allows you to say, I want to keep, you know, at one annual backup every year for seven years. I want to keep monthly backups for two years, weekly backups for three months, daily backups for two weeks, that kind of thing. So it allows you to be a little bit more granular in terms of uh, your backup. That is going to be coming out next year. I don't have an exact date for you. It's in the works right now. Um, I would say mid-year would be my guess, but we don't have a firm date on it yet. It's in the works and it will be coming out soon. Um, we have a question about synthetic backups, synthetic full backups, synthetic full backups. We support currently with um, uh, Wasabi and AWS. That's where we support them right now. We have a customer asking why not with other services. Um, 
I will add your request for those other services to our list. It's mostly a matter of well, customer requests. It's not that they can't be done, um, but we've had the most requests recently for support inside Wasabi, and that's where uh, we 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 were supporting it. Um, so uh, looking through it, uh, Richard, if you see a question in there that you want answered, you can feel free to chime in. Um, yes, we have, uh, we have a question related to the number of MSPs that are using Wasabi uh, and MSP uh, 360. I, I, sorry, I, Richard, I need you to speak up just a little bit. I was having a hard time hearing you. I want to make sure everybody else can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, so, yeah. Is there a question you wanted to answer? Yes, I wanted to address the question of the number of uh, partners that are using both MST360 and Wasabi in Europe. I think we probably have uh, several dozen of partners using that already. Okay. So, and it's a growing list. Uh, every week we are adding new ones. Yeah, I think we're, uh, I think on the MSP360 side, we're well over 8,000 MSPs and we've been growing like crazy actually the last few years. So. Uh, that's been good for us and uh, Wasabi is climbing up and one of our top uh, storage providers in terms of uh, how much storage is being used and how many customers are uh, using our solution with Wasabi. So it's uh, uh, been good for us. Um, so, uh, Question related to the storage. Uh, knowing that if you are already using some other uh, cloud storage solutions, uh, is it easy to move to Wasabi? I would say yes. Usually what people do is that they are just uh, switching. Let's say they are using already Amazon solution S3. They just have to switch uh, to Wasabi by changing the S3 link. So it's, it's pretty standard and compatible. We recommend usually to, to start from uh, the new backups uh, to Wasabi and then keep the retention time on the existing uh, other cloud providers during a certain period and, and then you just switch uh, easily. We have solutions that can also move data from one cloud provider to another depending on the capacity but uh, I would say in this case potentially you can use uh, both during yeah, the that's, that, that's true. It's, and we, we kind of say the same thing. So if you're using a different cloud storage provider, usually the easiest way to migrate is just to, you know, create a Wasabi account, create the connector to it and change your customer uh, backup jobs to point to it. Once they point to the new storage, everything will be re-uploaded fresh. Uh, at that point, you can let the data, the backups that are in your other cloud storage provider age out as needed, as required. So if you're required to keep those backups for a certain amount of time, you can keep them in that cloud storage and then um, you know, delete them when you no longer need them. You can download them to uh, say you know, storage that you have in your own data center. Uh, for permanent storage, um, but sometimes actually keeping them up there is is less expensive, but especially if you're paying, you know, large sums for data egress. So if you're using a service where it costs you a lot of money to download from the cloud, it may be actually more cost effective just to leave it up there for however long you need it and then just delete it and close the account when you no longer need it. Um, that's usually the easiest way, but Wasabi does have, what's it called, the Wasabi ball that allows you to see data in initially. Is that right, Richard? Yes, Wasabi Bond is just a way to, to extract data from on-premise to the cloud. So if you want to move, let's say, your data, your backups from existing on-premise storage, and you want to see it in the cloud, uh, if you don't have the bandwidth available and a lot of data to move to Wasabi, then we are using the Wasabi Bond as a transportation between your location and the, the, the Amsterdam, for example, okay. uh, just by moving the box. It's a NAS appliance. Uh, so there was a question, Richard, maybe it's worth answering. Uh, we have a uh, potential customer who's located in Sweden. I assume they would back up to the Amsterdam data center. That would be certainly be the closest and probably the highest performing and, and be within the EU region. Um, if they use replication though, um, 
then that data would be replicated presumably to one of the US data centers. Is that correct? If they wanted yes. to do that, but that's not, you, a, that's not a requirement. It's a bucket replication. So you can replicate to another bucket in the same location, even if it doesn't make sense in terms of data availability. Uh, and uh, it does not bring that much in terms of data durability because the design of the objects storage architecture with the erasure coding is not requiring to add in uh, replic to add a replication locally. So usually when you do a bucket replication, it's, it means that you want to have a, a better availability as opposed to what people were doing in, let's say with their on-premise storage when they do a synchronous copy to another location to increase the data durability. So, but yes, you're right. I mean, if you want to do several locations for now, we are only having a location in Amsterdam. We're going to open a new location in Europe within the next 12 months. So if you want to stay within the GDPR zone, uh, the 29 countries that are recognized by the GDPR regulation, then you, you just have to wait a little bit uh, to have this second location uh, ready uh, in Europe. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, there is a, there's a question about retention. It's hard to answer specific questions for your particular customer needs, but um, you can set up with MSP 360 both uh, duration-based and version-based retention. So um, the question was really more about what if somebody accidentally edits a file and then that new version is uploaded? How do we manage that? Um, uh, with that kind of question, usually what I recommend is if you don't want a file edited, it should be fixed, just mark it as read only. That's usually what I do. I mean, so when I'm doing just as a, just a, a personal example, when I'm doing my taxes in the United States, after I'm done preparing my taxes, I mark all of those files as read only. Uh, that way I cannot accidentally edit them. But if you're going to leave files read write and somebody's going to edit them, then you may get a new version uploaded. Then you're going to have to be careful based on uh, how many versions you want to keep and the the uh, duration for how long they are being kept. Uh, but of course, you can create different backup sets. You don't have to feel like with manage backup that you have to create. You know, I'm keeping backups for a year and I'm keeping a maximum of you know say three versions of each file. Uh, if you have certain data sets where you need to keep them longer or keep more versions of those files that maybe are, you know, edited frequently, think about a law firm who's maybe updating, you know, contracts all the time. And you want to make sure you can go back to any version of that contract over the last two months. You can, you can keep unlimited versions for those particular endpoints or folders. Um, where the retention needs are, say, uh, more sophisticated than something like, uh, you know, more general folders that tend to have, you know, corporate information in PDF format and thing like that. So you don't have to feel like you have to use the same retention settings for everything. Uh, and you can design them as needed. Um, so I, I, would, I would maybe add that uh, if you really don't want to have the file being accidentally uh, edited, you can store your file in immutable buckets. So you can, let's say, set up the immutability for a certain period. It's, you can do it for six months, three months. So you can create an immutable situation during a period or forever. So it's, at least you are sure that nothing can happen, can happen to these files. Yep, that's true. So you could flag the bucket as immutable and then, you know, start a change the bucket on the manage backup side and start backups to a new location. That way the old information is fixed. It can't be removed or edited in any way and that it's there for, you know, the duration if needed. Um, question about, um, uh, I mentioned speed throttling of the backups. Um, this question about hybrid backups. Do, do you need to run separate backups to local and cloud? You get your choice with managed backup. You can do local backups if you want, if you're not set on the cloud or you have certain backup tests that you just want to do locally for whatever reason, you can do that. There's no added costs for that with our licenses. If you want to back up to the cloud, and we certainly recommend you do, it's better for a variety of reasons we've covered uh, on the call. Um, you don't have, you can back up to the cloud, but if you want to do hybrid backups, that's a special backup type 
within managed backup, and that's a single pass backup where we do the, uh, you know, the analysis, the compression and encryption and send it out simultaneously to the local and the cloud. So you don't have to run two backups for that. Um, all right, I think that's uh, pretty good. I think we've covered most of them. I realize we haven't gotten to everyone's questions. Um, if you had a question there that we did not get to, um, we will have somebody reach out to you uh, directly through your email address and try to help you with those answers. Um, get signed up if you want as a two week trial. If that's not enough time for you, your account manager will be more than happy to extend it. Uh, you can sign up for Wasabi as well. It only takes a few minutes. Uh, what I recommend though is, you know, do not struggle with this, you know, a new solution and trying to figure out how to do it. You know, we, we, you know, we think the user interface is fairly easy to use, but it's new, right? It's not something you may have seen before. If you're a new customer and you're considering moving to, to manage backup from MSP 360, take the time, ask your account manager for a demo, take 30 minutes, have somebody show you how to set up the product and how to use it. That way, when you go through the trial, you don't get frustrated about any difference in terminology or how to do things. Um, and you will set, have, more than happy to set that up at your convenience using you know, any of our account managers and solution architects that are kind of based all over the place. Uh, and they will set it up at a convenient time for you uh, in whatever European time zone you, you work in. Um, so uh, Richard, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, for participating in this webcast with us today. Uh, I thought it was great. And I want to thank everybody for taking an hour out of their day to attend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And we will send out links to everybody with the, uh, you know, a recorded version of this presentation for you to uh, review as needed. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, David, for the invitation.